As you may have noticed while watching this series, easter eggs depend a lot on unit and hero abilities. If your hero can clear trees, there are usually easter eggs hidden behind them. The same goes for if you have access to siege weapons. The Frozen Throne introduces a brand new hero ability that makes the possibilities of easter egg placement explode. Blink. The ability to teleport beyond normally impassable obstacles such as water or rocks made it possible for a lot of interesting secrets to be put in each level where my Ev is playable. So make sure to keep your eyes open for any areas that look off the beaten path, and if you're serious about finding secrets as you go through, it's a good idea to prioritize putting hero points into the blink ability as early as possible. The only thing I don't like about the Frozen Throne is the addition of rune power-ups. It really makes it feel like the game is holding your hand the entire time, and it decreases the satisfaction of beating a hard foe when it just drops a healing rune for you. The same goes for the secret areas accessible by Blink. Almost every single one contains a rune of mana. Come on, Blizzard. Does it take that long to regenerate 50 mana? 10 mana at level 2, Blink. When I play, I just try to ignore these runes for an added challenge. Just as a reminder, as in the Reign of Chaos episodes, I'll not be focusing on the easter eggs found from destroying crates, creeps, or creep buildings unless they're in an out of the way area. There are a lot to be found in the Frozen Throne, so if you want to find every secret, get destructive. The chase is on! The first Blink accessible area is reachable from the first clearing. Blink from this dock over to this island, and you'll find a Tome of Intelligence in this crate. There's also a secret on this more southern island. If you destroy the crate, a bunch of Murgle shell suckers, and a clam trapper, a snare caster if you're playing on hard mode, ambush Maiev. They'll drop some runes, of course, and a Ring of Protection plus one. The next one is accessible from where you first encounter the Naga. The island in the bay has some more sirens on it, and one of them will drop a Tome of Strength. There's also one behind the trees to the north. This shipwreck has dropped a crate with a scroll of protection in it. There are a couple of items to grab at the top of the rather impressive waterfall by the fountain. Blink on top of it and kill the spiders. One will drop a spider ring, and the other some plus three claws of attack. You can sneak around here and see a little island behind these trees. On it is a furbog hermit who will drop some healing wards if you mercilessly slaughter him. Seriously, I feel like a jerk whenever I get this easter egg. Here he is, a lone furbolg who's built a house away from everyone just so he can be alone, and possibly to avoid the encroaching corruption of the forests, raising stags peacefully, and a night elf warden appears out of nowhere and butchers him. I guess he shouldn't have set out that rune of mana. I blame the rune of mana. There are quite a few unused triggers in this scenario. First off, judging by the region names in this encounter with the Wildkin, formerly called an Owlbear in Reign of Chaos, not sure why that was changed, this was apparently originally an encounter with furbolgs. I'm guessing the whole idea of corrupted furbolgs as enemies was just getting old by this point, so the devs decided to switch things up. There's also apparently a gate right here. It has several triggers for the Wildkin opening and closing it, as well as attacking once it was destroyed. I put a gate back on the map to see how it worked, and I can see why the developers took it out. Its operation was kind of wonky, and it basically just felt out of place and pretty unnecessary. The Wildkin attacking the archers in the cinematic was also originally in slow motion. There was also a fun little trigger that would make a bunch of skinks appear and scatter when you entered an area. I have no idea where the original region was supposed to be since it got deleted, perhaps on an island, but here's the trigger recreated so you can see how it worked more or less. Woohoo! This level also has some unused dialogue, though unfortunately the sound files have been deleted, and all that remains are empty trigger transmissions. Here are the lines. Move. The forest is too still. Nothing stirs. The creatures we hunt must be terrifying indeed to cow the very breath of nature. Look there, at the shoreline. The tracks lead off into the sea and then reappear back on land. What are these creatures? We'll find out soon enough. Let's move. Somewhat unnecessary, so I can see why they are dropped. Lastly, a couple of triggers suggest that Warden Heroes were once called Warders in an earlier draft of the Frozen Throne, and there's an unnamed Mountain King in the editor whose purpose is unknown. Unless you count the unplayable Orc Juggernaut unit in Reign of Chaos, this is the first time Warcraft ships have set sail since Beyond the Dark Portal, so it's understandable that this mechanic would be emphasized more than the Blink ability in this map. Do some sailing and explore the oceans and you'll find some pretty great loot from creep encounters. There are a couple of Blink secrets though, such as this pendant of energy on the other side of this pond. You'll have to fight a sea giant behemoth to get it, but it's possible to kite it to the shore and kill it with your other units if you need to. In the island to the far northwest is a library. There is no knowledge left here. Only nightmares and the shadows of regret. Actually, Maiev, there is some knowledge to be found. The hidden tomes of the ancients, to be exact. Maiev will need some help from Nysha or a huntress's sentinel to see up on top of the walls, but there are three tomes of intelligence up there for her to grab. 
Pretty nice. There's also Rune of Mana on this lower platform, but I can't for the life of me figure out what the point of it is. If it were me designing this map, I would have only put trees near the lower platform, so you had to use a sentinel to get on top of it, and then have the lower platform give you some visibility to the higher ones. I don't know, that's just me. The Tomb of Sargeras I always wondered what this place was when I was a kid playing Warcraft 2, and I loved this map when I first played it as a teenager. You can see how intricate the map is just by playing it, but after looking at the hundreds of triggers it took to wire it, the complex cinematic scripts, and the sheer complexity of the doodad placement and layout, I've realized that it must have taken months to make this map, probably by several different designers. It could be my very favorite scenario on the Frozen Throne. Though there aren't many secrets in the map that I could find, Gul'dan's Shadow Orb quest is an extremely fun and rewarding treasure hunt full of easter egg-like encounters if you see it all the way through till its end. There are ten fragments to find, and their locations are range from being inside a turtle's stomach to platforms just outside your sight range. I'm not going to ruin this one for you guys, partly because it's already built in side quest, but also because it's just such a satisfying way to explore this amazing dungeon and get rewarded with an awesome artifact. Go play the map and find all the orb fragments, putting this series of secret finding tips to use. You keep your eyes peeled, explore every inch of the tomb, watch for runes, and use your unit abilities wisely, you'll find the fragments and get the most out of the Tomb of Sargeras. You gotta love escort quests, where the thing you're trying to escort is the slowest of your units, even if her actual job title is RUNNER. As fast as I can. There are a couple of impressively hidden secrets on this one. They're mainly pretty easy to miss because they involve infiltrating enemy territory. Use the staff of teleportation you get from the first excavation site to take Maiev back to the base. Then push into the Naga base at the top of this waterfall. Blink up this bigger waterfall, kill the Naga royal guard, and then break down the gate you'll come upon the secret Keeper of Storms shrine. Nothing much happens when you arrive besides a small earthquake, but the 1500 gold in front of the statue is a welcome addition to your coffers. While you're over here, blink off the north platform into this canal and you can find a Tome of Agility. Before you leave the Naga base, go into the other canal behind their gold mine and you'll find a plus three mantle of intelligence at the end of it. If you have the fully upgraded blink by this point, it's fairly easy to outrun the enemies, but be careful not to get overwhelmed. This level tries to stress you out with the whole runner mechanic and we have to call for reinforcements thing, but chill out. There's no timer going. Just make sure your base is protected and go hunt for some easter eggs. Actually, to help with defending, on your way to retrieve the boats, there's a glyph of fortification in the little stream behind these rocks. Activating it will increase your building's hit points by 20% and increase their armor significantly. Another one is a sneaky and somewhat weird encounter reachable by boat. When you get your transports at the shipyard, instead of taking them west like you're supposed to, first take some troops east along this canal. And this alcove here is a massive ruined gate. If you break it down, an infernal inexplicably falls from the sky and fights you. I'm really not sure what the point of the blue fire is. Anyway, it'll drop some ruined bracers, which are really nice. The interesting thing about this encounter is that depending on who enters the area and witnesses the infernal first, a different piece of dialogue is spoken. One shot. One kill. Ashal Theridas! I'd rather be hibernating. Your move. <laughs> Nothing is spoken with the Huntress or Ballistae. I guess the developer forgot you encountered these units on your way to the boats who can join you at this point. Come to think of it though, I don't know what a Ballista would say. <laughs> Judging by the Infernal's group name, Kill Jaden Seekers, this Infernal was likely sent by Kill Jaden to help Illidan since we find out later that Illidan works for him. Moving on, once you actually go west to this Murgle and Gold Coin area, have a Huntress throw a Sentinel on this tree here. It'll reveal a platform with a Tome of Strength up top. Once you make it to the bottom left corner of the map, you can blink across here to see yet another Pandaren Easter Egg, this time the new Pandaren Brewmaster Hero. When you blink up to him, Let's call before closing! He'll give you a pair of plus three slippers of agility, or as I like to call them, Spider-Man socks. Before you sail the runner to the destination, have Maiev go up this catwalk. Once you take out the two sirens, blink over to this flowered area in front of the big fountain. Scampering around over here is Grank the Rat. He's essentially the counterpart to Filson the Rat in the culling map. He's wearing a talisman of evasion that makes him impossible to hit, so click him a bunch to get the amulet for yourself. One of the developers of Warcraft 3, David Fried, told me that these rats, Grank and Filson, are a spoonerism for the name of a Warcraft 3 producer, Frank Gilson, who apparently was good at dodging things. Judging by the layout of this map, it may be possible to access this area a bit earlier if you're really evasive yourself. There seems to be a platform behind the Naga base that could serve as a good point to blink down to Grank's flower patch. 
Of course, you'd have to manage to get through the entire Naga base without dying, and there are some trees blocking the path, so it may not actually be possible to see past them to blink. But if you somehow manage to do it without using cheats, let me know. You'll definitely earn my respect. Quite a few in this great map. Besides these, I noticed that David forgot to add quest icons to the quests. BTN Ambush, the icon for Shadow Meld, is the default icon when you create a quest trigger in the world editor, and is the icon for all three quests you discover on this map. The first secret on this map you can get immediately. Run Maev down to this outcropping and blink down to the shore. The scroll of regeneration and replenishment potion you get can help her defend the base. The other easter eggs on this map are a bit haphazard. Some of them I'm not sure if they're supposed to be easter eggs or actual strategic areas you're supposed to find. For example, there's this chamber with sea elementals here that Furion can force of nature through to get a bunch of tomes, a minor replenishment potion, and a circle of nobility, but it's a pretty obvious one. There's also this wall of trees up here, behind which is an extra, relatively safe gold mine if you don't mind fighting some turtles, but again, this might be a logical place to look. I don't know, you tell me. There is an interesting alternative way to reach Maev, though. We'll have to fight our way through the Naga to reach Maev. Well, you don't have to, Furion. You could just cut your way through the jungle behind the Stormreaver camp. It leads straight there. There's even a rune of mana in one of the tents to help you with casting Force of Nature. Very well. Let's get moving, then. The only other true easter eggs I could find are on the other sides of Illidan's base. One is up in the top right corner. With daylight or ultravision, Maev can just make out the platform on the other side to blink to it. Inside a barrel is a nice amulet of spell shield. The dragon turtle by the aforementioned gold mine also drops one of these, which is a bit odd, but since you have multiple heroes, it's kind of handy. I'd recommend giving them to Tyrande and Maev since Furion goes out of the picture on the next level. Yay, another escort quest in the same campaign. No, this level's actually kind of fun, and it's the only level in all the campaigns that allows you to actually push a button to make a choice. There aren't a lot of secrets hidden along the way, but the existing ones are definitely worthwhile to find. The first one is found in this crate on this ledge. This is one of the most memorable easter eggs for me personally. I like how the map designer put pathing blockers on the steep sides of these hills. Normally unit movement isn't affected by how steep the terrain is, but this makes an interesting obstacle for Maev to blink past. Rather than physical barriers or water, it's just simply too steep to walk down to. Anyway, you'll snag our good old friend the Orb of Fire from this crate. The other three easter eggs are most easily accessible if you take the northern route at the crossroads. One is in this ransacked camp. This crate contains another talisman of evasion. Another is in these crates by the river, a pair of plus six boots of Quel'Thalas. The last is a mounted bandit lord who will drop some plus twelve claws of attack upon death. All incredible finds for sure. How do you reach these since they're hidden behind trees you ask? No ballista or force of nature this time around, but there is one ability you can use to get through trees. <laughs> If only you could control Kale on this level, Flame Strike would have saved a lot of time. Speaking of Flame Strike, there's a disabled trigger or two that originally displayed text notifying you when Kale was casting a spell. For example, Flame Strike being cast and Siphon Mana being cast. I'm glad Blizzard took these out because they later ended up using notifications like these way too often in StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. They warned you whenever and wherever a boss would attack, which sucked all the fun and challenge out of the fights. I like the layout of this map where you can read between the lines and see how Illidan likely flooded the city to make it fit for the Naga to settle on. Maps that are detailed like this are always fun. The only secret though is in the Paladin's jail cell. Instead of just rescuing him and heading out, first blink up to the platform on the south side of the cell. The barrels contain some potions, a rune of course, and a plus six robe of the Magi. The editor indicates that the Paladin used to have slightly different dialogue. Instead of saying, A righteous might will always overcome the forces of darkness. He would say the might of the righteous will always overcome the forces of darkness. Not sure why they changed it to make him sound cockier. And it's always bothered me that he says we will help you and that Kale says some human paladins. I understand dialogue was probably recorded before the map was created, but still. Why did they think having more than one paladin on the map would be fun in the first place? The only easter eggs I could find on the Brothers Storm Rage are ones accessible by swimming through the water. Definitely first, as is controlling the Naga race. The first is an item on the North River Bank, which is an Inferno Stone, and farther upstream is a powerful amphibious river golem who will drop some claws of attack plus 15. 
That's a third set of claws in two levels, and their combined bonuses add up to plus 36 attack. That's pretty much it for the last level of Terror of the Tides, though. If you're getting stressed out from the game saying things like, We must hold on to hope. You'd best hurry if you are to save her. And... Tyrande. Don't worry. Unfortunately, for the sake of challenge, there's a trigger that prevents Tyrande from ever dying. I always wondered, how did her warriors get downstream with her anyway? And those ancients? Did she have a wisp in her pocket when she got swept downstream? Oh well, at least one thing's for sure. Whatever I may be, whatever I may become in this world, know that I will always look out for you, Tyrande. Whew, that blink ability sure added some length to the video. Sorry about that. Unless you like long videos like I do, in which case, you're welcome. Thanks for watching another episode of the Seaster Egg series. As I was making this video, I reached out to David Fried, the developer I mentioned earlier, who you may have seen commenting on some of these videos. I was able to ask him some questions about Warcraft 3 and learn some amazing behind-the-scenes stuff. Click on this portal to go read the interview on my blog if you'd like. The link is also in the description below. Don't forget to click like before you go if you liked the video, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Warcraft 3 Easter Eggs.